Oh, welcome back everyone to today's Destiny 2 build video that I have to show. This week, we're going to be playing around with the exotic that I don't believe has seen the light of day with many players since Destiny 1. And this is an exotic that was quite popular in PvP for a simple usage. And that exotic is the Lucky Raspberry. Now what I have for you all as of today is a build that will allow you to have a super fast, super regeneration and guaranteed grenade energy at your disposal with great arc chain effects. Now think of this build like a mini Warlock Stormcaller build, which can be great if you're looking for a version like that, but for hunters only. But thanks to the Elemental World mods effects, we are able to create a very sustained build based around the chain effects of Lucky Raspberry, and from there, you'll have a high uptime based around the exotic than ever before. I will admit it feels great to use certain low tier or forgotten exotics that don't get the needed buffs from the devs as they have their places, just they lack the effects that other exotics offer. Hopefully, by the time this video is fully explained and shows you what the build can actually do, you will have a new appreciation for using underused exotics such as this, and hopefully, the Lucky Raspberry will be one of them. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video, then do leave a like and a sub for more content like this in the future, I would really appreciate it if you do. Starting off the subclass, we will be using Way of the Wind to incorporate its melee and ability centric regenerations across the board that will greatly benefit the build. The Arc Strider subclass tree tend to be best suited for close quarter fighting rather than grenade ability spamming and this can be seen with the way that each of the subtree perks are broken down. This at first caused many issues with narrowing down which subclass would best suit the build overall since we are utilizing our grenades to trigger the Lucky Raspberry's ability a lot. And for us to do this, we need a subtree that can provide the needed buffs that we can't get anywhere else. Where the Warrior subtree focuses on melee that gets stronger the more you utilize it and will reward you greatly if you accept the risks slash rewards with it, but this doesn't benefit the exotic in any sort of way. Way of the current focuses on stopping enemy's movement via melee and will grant you ability and weapon reload speed upon successful hits with your melee, and this can work as a alternative subtree, but we need something a bit more rounded and available. That left me with Way of the Wind and from playing around with it, this is the best subtree to pick for all its all round perks and simplicity that doesn't deviate away from the build as a whole. Best way to put it, this subtree does focus on use of melee to get around and benefit from its buffs, but is not needed to greatly enhance the build and won't interfere with the building design. Combat Meditation will provide us with a quick ability regeneration the moment we get injured, which will be a lot and will mean we will get 100% uptime from this. Combine that with our Elemental Worlds once active and we can regen all of our abilities back in literal seconds. On top of that, we have the Disorienting Blow perk that will come in handy for stunning enemies near us and will give us an opportunity to run to safety if need be or use it to take out those who are interfering with us. And then focused breathing will help reduce the cooldown to our mobility, that is linked into our dodge and if you're using Gambler's dodge, basically means we can use Disorienting Blow as an effective way of grouping enemies up and then use our grenades to take them out in one go. For something simple, the subclass offers the best neutral game that any player will want to have when using the build, as it doesn't require a lot of investment to make it good. And with this being the case, it means you have a much easier time operating loadout in whatever content you decide to use it in. It's a win-win all around folks. For weaponry, the uses of the Trinity Ghoul will highly, highly allow you to keep an arc effect occurring on all those affected by it, so it's best if you have the following bow as your main secondary. From there, your primary should be an effective close range weapon with some impact to it, and then our heavy can be mixed to however we like, depending on activities. My primary in our case is the Toyon Trouble shotgun with Assault Mag, Fill Prep and Snapshot Sight. Since the primary section of the loadout doesn't need any specific perks to make it even more flexible, we can utilize a weaponry that will work wonders in close range fights such as shotguns. The following shotgun is great as it has good amount of impact damage that can easily shred shielded enemies within 2 or 1 shot and against champions it will only take us perhaps maybe 3 to 4 shots to down them which will vary from time to time. The only issue I have with this shotgun is its slow reload speed, which makes sense for an aggressive frame. The slow reload can at times put you in a rough spot if you have multiple major type enemies charging at you, and at times can lead to your deaths more often than normal. 
Luckily, I do have the Filbert perk that should help with speeding up my reload speed as long as I crouch, but this can be 50-50 at times. Definitely recommend you grab one of these shotguns as there isn't a lot of primary based shotguns that are similar to the style that the Toyo and Trouble shotgun offers. For our secondary, I'm using the Trinity Ghoul Exotic, which is a weapon I've covered in the past many times before, and is a weapon worth investing in if you have the Forsaken DLC. This weapon before was considered quite low from a lot of players' perspective in terms of using it, as its exotic trait required you to land a headshot each time to proc its perk. Now that's fine against certain types of enemies, but not all of them, and when you couldn't do it all the time because of said type enemies, the bow became a standard secondary bow with not much effect. As of now, the weapon with its catalyst was initially buffed, and the weapon can now proc its ability not only via headshots, but also via any arc sources, which meant any arc ability you use against an enemy got you a kill with it, and at the same time proc the exotic's perk. This made the exotic 10 times worth using, and also 10 times more lethal to use in wave based activities, as you could create a ton of orbs back to back and never stop. With the build, we will be utilizing the orbs provided and the arc chain effects to take out large groups of adds in one go, and also empower ourselves to get grenades energy back via the elemental well and elemental ordnance plus armaments mod. With this, we can use our grenades to turn multiple enemies at once and if successful, we will get our grenades back as well as a charged bow that we can use to proc some orbs of power and basically repeat the process over and over again. From there, this will also affect our other mod named Strike and Light that upon melee killing an enemy, we will create an orb of power to drop for allies. This will be helpful for us and our team as it can allow greater team support via your loadout and can be useful for those who are using Charge of Light mods and need a easy source of collecting them. For heavy, I've chosen to use the swarm with killing wind and bore weapon, and is a great heavy to use when playing against certain bosses with lots of crit spots or champions for quick burst damage. Although I tend to switch with a rocket launcher at times if I need a big boost in damage there and then, the swarm is mainly the weapon I always go back to for its magazine size and damage over time compared to what rockets can pull off. I have found great success with the weapon against those with great big crit spots as it can allow me to easily focus on sawing their health down to make it easier for me and my team to take them out. On top of that, it's also quite smooth to fire while also retaining a high impact damage. This can be useful if you're looking for something to use in PvP, of course. For stats, your main focus will be your discipline for faster cooldown over time just in case you end up in a situation to where your grenades don't proc, but at the same time, a lot of the stats can be flexible as we have the Elemental World mods in play that will naturally provide you the boost that you want or need. Taking a look at Discipline, 70 stat points for a 45 second cooldown for grenades is a sweet spot to aim for as it's not too high and leaving all of your other stats out left to dry, but also not too low to where its effects won't be felt. Since we will be having mods such as Elemental Ordnance and Armaments to proc wells, which will boost our ability regen for 30 seconds, You'll get a nice flow of energy always coming your way that will rapidly regen your grenades the moment they are thrown. Now, as I thought it requires you to tag multiple ads at once if you wish to get a full grenade return, this can sometimes go wrong and not always proc, which can lead to wasted energy. With this system of mods and subclass in place, from the failure of procing exotic, we should be able to cushion the failure of this area and be able to get back up again within a few seconds. This should in practice allow you to retain a high grenade rate at all times if things go as planned. On top of that, we also have Ashes to Assets mod to gain super energy on kills, and Font of Wisdom that will grant us a plus 50% intellect boost to our current intellect stat, and the Bomber mod which will work similar to the distribution perk, but focusing solely on our grenade regeneration. All of these combined will allow us to use our super more often than ever before, which is great as the super has a wide effectiveness against group of adds or singular DPS. From here, filling out the rest of the stats should be fairly simple and not need that much of an explanation. If you have room to invest, do invest some points into your strength stat as like I mentioned earlier, we can make use of it to help our team out. Now with the main bases covered, let's take a look at the mods we are using and how they play within the build. For head, we have Discipline, Ashes to Assets and Elemental Armaments mod. Arm, we have Minor Resilience, Fastball, Overload Bow, and Strike and Light mod. 
Chest we have Discipline, because of Dampener times 2 and Font of Wisdom mod. Leg we have Maya Intellect, Absolution and Elemental Orders mod. Cloak we have Distribution, Bomber and Charge with Light mod. I wanted to try and create a build based around the exotic that will allow you to proc his ability at least 90% of the time and be an alternative crowd controller for hunters who wish to not only try the exotic out but also try out the Arc subclass and have a reasoning to using it. The Arc Strider subclass is really great for close corner fighting and even more great for its capabilities in PvP. But since the arrival of Stasis and Revenant being the top tier PvP plus PvE subclass to pick in terms of add control. Arc Strider hasn't found that much use as of lately. On top of that, its usage in endgame activities like Nightfall hasn't been recommended by a lot of players because of the risk behind most of the perks requiring you to always be upfront and personal against most enemies. With the build, we should be able to fix a few things and make it usable in endgame, just not grandmaster level. Firstly, with Proc and Lucky Raspberry's exotic, we have the mods such as Ordnance and Armaments available that will maintain its duration for longer and always back up the exotic in case it fails against certain enemies. Upon successfully procking the exotic, we will also gain great benefit from activating our bow's perk and thus create even more wells, orbs and arching effects for clearing our enemies over and over again. Both of these in hand basically allow you to electrify whatever area you are in and prevent enemies from escaping or attacking you. In case we get an enemy that does come towards us, we can utilize the Disorientating Blow perk to stun said enemy and then gain up all the power from defeating them with our melee, which we can easily replenish if we have the Gambler's Dodge available, so two times at best. Secondly, if our grenades are successful all the time, we will be gaining a large amount of super energy back, which means we can have a super within seconds if the right type of enemies come our way. Add in Fond of Wisdom to the mix and you'll easily be the first person to proc your super and probably be the only one to do it one after another. If everything goes as planned and you utilize all of your abilities and exotics in one, you can become a mini stormcrawler who is capable of locking down areas with great effect. Using this in Gambit for example would make the content an absolute joke since you'll be able to wipe out enemies with one grenade or a charge bow and this is the same if you used it in strikes or battlegrounds etc. But when it comes to nightfall ordeals, this will vary at times as anything from the lowest to the highest is doable with the build. Even 1330 is achievable, as long as you watch your space and have the right modifiers for each champion. In Grandmasters, this is a big no-no, as it lacks any sort of survival-based parts to keep you alive, and although the weapons, mods and the dotted bow is fine to use, your subclass will need to change and you'll probably need to swap out some mods for better safety. Overall, the Lucky Raspberry and Trinity Ghoul will make a killer combo that both work in hand with each other and allow you to control the field as you see fit. Thanks to the elemental wells, we now have a great set of mods to pair with the two as extra support compared to using Charge with Light, since the exotic in mind will always be successful in procking, so we need something as a backup in case things don't go as planned. Now if you've been looking for a way to try the exotic out and gain the full potential from it, now is an absolute great time to try it out and fully invest into it if you can. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up with date with Destiny and Titanfall lore content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by, I'll see you on the next one.